In this tutorial, we are going to make some deep water vibes. First, going to add some lights. Here I have an animated, materialized and texture painted monster fish. To obtain such results, you can always watch these tutorials on the channel, full of information and tricks. Let's start. Here in the render view, we don't have any sort of light at all. To start, I will begin by change the word color to match the darkest purple in the reference. Going to add some light, starting with a spot one. Rotate on the X 90 degree and move it back. In the light properties, change color to a yellowish. Power to 1000, radius to 0.1. Now for the front light, duplicate it, move it front, and flip the rotation, change color to pink, reduce the strength to 300, spot size to 45. Now for another third light, duplicate this one and rotate it to target the fish. Color to yellowish tone and for a fourth light, I will select the lamp and move 3D cursor to it to add a point light and make it yellow. To see what's happening, in the viewport shading, change the compositor to camera. Notice it's too bright. Reduce it to 1 and link it to the bulb now to always move with it. Add one last point light with a proper settings. Then link it to the jaw movement to always move with it. Now I will add fog with a cube covering the object and surrounding it. In the object properties in viewport display, display as wire so we can see through it. Adjust the location and size and move to shading. Select principal BSDF and add principled volume instead. And link the volume output with volume. For this example, I will change values as follows. Now add volume scatter node mix shader node and mix both change color to vivid pink and match this volume scatter values to the main principled volume now to properly control the density of the scatter i will add a noise texture node with a color ramp play a little with the ramp until you get the results you desire and that's it. Now we are going to create those looping wavy plants using grease pencil. I will start by adding a blank grease pencil object. In its properties, I will select the only layer. Then in materials, here is the default black stroke, which I will change to purple to match the reference. Now in draw mode, we can start drawing. Till we get the first plant, make sure you have selected a strong ink brush. Now I will add another layer to the same grease pencil object and another material as well. First, rename this to purple stroke and add another, call it pink fell. Disable the stroke and enable fell then change the color. Now select the new added layer, then start drawing. Another layer, and draw, and so on. Now these layers for organizing only, and in this example I will be using them, since I want to separate each plant in a new separated grease pencil object to apply different effects values later and move them freely in the viewport. Now after we finish, I will go into edit mode and start 
the separation process. Select with L, then P, and separate by selection. Now, since every plant is a separated object, then we can move them to match the reference. Now, to animate them in a wavy manner, I will use effects, not modifiers, since the grease pencil objects don't have a wave modifier. But to see the animation in action, we need to be in the render view. Hide the fog and other elements for now, and let's start by adding a wave distortion effect. Play with the values. Now to animate it through time, I will add a driver. Let's just type in frame. It's animating really fast, so divide it by 20. Slow by 10. Good. But if you notice, it's not a perfect loop. It glitches in the end and start of the animation range. To solve this, I will add a new driver, which will be included in the description. It will make a perfect looping animation, which this 190 is the ending frame and you can always edit it to match your project. Now repeat the same process to another plant, but to make it slower or faster, change this value. Repeat the process, and there you have it. Now we are going to create this custom particles in Blender. So here I have imported an SVG file containing those bubbles, which will be attached in the description, and put all five instances into one collection with the name of Particle Elements 2. Now to start, select the fish body, which will be emit the particles, then add a particle system. Reduce the number of particles, Frames end to match the timeline. Now to make them die before the end frame and to make seamless loop, I will subtract the lifetime value, which is 50, from the end to be 69. Moving to velocity 0.5 to slow it down, randomness 0.1, moving to render. Render as Collection and choose Particle Elements 2. Increase Scale and Scale Randomness. It's now working, but it's not facing the camera and not in a front view. So to solve this, I will make them all visible and rotate every one of them 90 degrees in the Z in the edit mode. So select one, edit mode, rotate, Z, 90, and so on. It's now solved. Now for the gravity, in the scene properties, it's a positive value on the Z, and that's what I need. If you want it down, change it to negative value. Back to particle system, in the field weights, reduce gravity to 0.1. And that's it. There you have it. Now, we are going to create this blinking light animation using drivers to make one light control them all. In this scene, we have four blinking lights. One, we will call it the main light with a power of 300. Second, with a power of 300 as well. Three, with a power of 1000. And fourth, with the power of one. Now we want the main light to control them all, but the values are not all the same. So, 
we will use drivers with very simple math equations to achieve this. First, rename the light to main light, then go to power, right click, then copy as a new driver and choose this light and in the power, right click, then paste driver. Now, since both values are 300, then when I change the main light, the other one will exactly match it. Cool. Now for the back one with the power of 1000, 1000 divided by 300 is 3.33. Then it's 3.33 times the main light. I will paste the same driver, then right click and edit. Change average value to scripted expression, then multiply it by 3.33. So it's almost a thousand, just like we want it to be. Now, if we change the main one, both linked lights will adapt. Now paste the driver to the fourth and final light. If the main light power is 300, this should be one. Then it's 300 divided by 300. So we are going to edit it and divide it by itself. In that case, it's 300. And just like that, one main light can now control them all. So you don't have to make keyframes for four different lights at four different times. Just select the main light and start the keyframing for the blinking. And all lights will follow. It's all math. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.